All right, so today we're at the uh, Jack Gibson or J Gibson Jack, I don't know, trailhead. And we're going to Gibson Peak. Oh, it is. It is Gibson Jack. Um, so, yeah, this is just a nice little parking lot. It's pretty big. Not a lot of people, but it is a Wednesday, so it's probably the slowest day you can get. And there's a little map. Uh, we are at the, uh, the top of that map there. And look out for moose. Stop help poaching. And uh, here we go on this little trail. It's nice and paved. Or not paved, but it's trailly. And then here's this cool guy. Uh, Sterling Righteous. There's a couple dollars. I actually went on the wrong trail, and then I switched over to this one. And this is the correct trail. So if you see that sign, you're going good. Just continuing up the trail. It's getting a little more forested. And here's a little uh, geocache under this nice little pine. There's these cool little uh, little guys that usually dance, but they're kind of tired today, I guess. So they weren't dancing. And then here's a little bridge. I wonder if there's any uh, trout in there. Uh, maybe, but I saw a little, an old trout fishing box, so maybe there are. I don't know. And then we're finally getting a little bit more elevation, but very gradual. The trail's still really nice. It's a couple miles in. And uh, it's starting to get a little snowy with patches and a little damp, so it's definitely a lot higher up now. And here we're close to the actual road you can drive up. Um, there's the uh, gate there by the ATV road, which we're now on. And there is where we have to go up to the Gibson Peak. There it is. So you could technically drive up this. I don't know why you would, but you could. Here we are, going up it. It's getting a lot steeper than the first part of the trail, first couple miles. Here we are at the uh, first false peak. You can see some ranges back there. I don't know what they are. And uh, the elevation at this kind of false peak is uh, it's around 7,000 something. But we have to keep going to the real peak. So we just continue on this ridge line. And the actual peak is also about 7,000. A little higher up, though. And then down this ridge, we have to go. Go. There's actually a road lower that you can go on, but I just went on the ridge because it was faster. And here's the uh, road that you could take. And here we go, back into the forest on this road. And it's nice because you actually get some shade. It wasn't too hot, but it was still nice. And that's kind of where we came down from. You can see a little bit of snow. It's almost all gone. And there's the uh, the car. So it's been about four-ish hours. Still not a ton of people on trails. Just a couple. And uh, this is the bridge I accidentally crossed the first time. All right, so I rate these hikes using three criteria, solitude, scenery, and difficulty. Solitude is just how many people are on the hiking trail. Uh, scenery is the good views, and then difficulty is how hard the hike is. So first, for solitude, I'd give it a seven. There wasn't a ton of people. That's also because it was Wednesday. But just overall, I think most of them stay at the first part of the half. If you go all the way up to Gibson Peak, uh, it's not too bad. Scenery is a seven. Once you're actually on top of the peaks, there's some really cool views, like ridges and low mountain peaks and cool forests. But the rest of it's kind of sagebrushy. There's also a cool, uh, cool river going down it, which is pretty awesome. And difficulty is probably a six. Uh, the first part of the loop is very easy. It's very flat and super uh, slow incline, and it's mostly shady. Going back down is also pretty easy, too. Um, it's mostly uh, paved the whole way unless you went on the ridge for a bit like I did, but if you want, you could just stay on the road the whole time. So overall, a nice little peak, not too bad, about four hours. Uh, if you enjoyed, clap your hands and crack your toes. Goodbye.